A uh, quick little video, um, little update on the um, intersection of a line, uh, and I decided to go with a plane, uh, or not plane, but sphere, plane, sphere intersection uh, rather than plane, um, and that's because I can um, vary the radius. All I need to, all I really need to worry about is the radius. Um, I'll probably work on the other form of intersection with the two planes uh, that uh, if you're looking down on this this uh, object here so you have a line going this way and a line going that way and then I'll do a plane intersection uh, with a ray cast and then if it passes through that those planes and those planes will be uh, specific to an object uh, then it would uh, you could possibly do something with the object but for now, uh, it took me forever to get this uh, code. The math was easy, but the, the figuring out, um, uh, using my camera and figuring out where I wanted to go with my distance and, and uh, where my position was and what variables were what, it was, uh, it was a little bit of a challenge, but uh, uh, for the most part, figured it out. And here's the result. So right now I have point one uh, chose uh, point one picked, right? So it'll the what what I have this doing is drawing a line from the center of the sphere to the first intersection point, and the first inter I think it's the first center. I might have the second one chosen. No, I have P one chosen. So what will happen is it should draw a line from the center to the first point. And it should be a straight line through uh, from where my mouse is currently uh, straight into the world. And I'll, I could draw another line, but I'm, a, I'm at an angle right here. So what it's doing is drawing a line down into the world and intersected right there. And we'll, uh, we'll get at a non no angle here. I'll just get try to get flat. And we'll shoot a line straight through. And there's my point right there. That's perfect. It's exactly where I wanted it. And it doesn't or it did intersect. Yeah, it intersected the other end too. But uh, I don't have the other intersection enabled right now. I'll show that in a second. But there is let's do it one more for you know for the hell of it. And that point is pointing right here. Yeah, it follows that line right there. All right, so let's do um, to show this works. Uh, let's do point two and point two. And so now this should draw a line to the second intersection point from the middle of the sphere. And it did. Perfect. So it intersected first here and then um, came out here. So if I was shooting a bullet, something like that, you know, I could determine, okay, it came in here, went out here, you know, it can keep going if it wants, lose speed, lose momentum, whatever, get stuck in a wall, who knows? It's pretty cool stuff. But um, using a sphere, it's um, I'm not entirely sure if that's the best option. There's a lot of uh, you use quadratic equation uh, in a sphere. This isn't this isn't tuned to be efficient yet. Uh, it was um, put together, you know, kind of quick, and uh, will get fixed and um, put in its own class and CPP file and all that stuff. So, uh, but this is the code for it. And all I have it doing is using geometry. And, uh, well, actually, no, this wasn't yet. Yeah. Okay, so I used a quadratic first, the analytical uh, step. And that was a little, like, something was wrong there. I'm not sure what was going on. But um, I think I, I actually might have found the problem. I could probably go back and fix that now. But um, I tried the analytical approach first didn't work for some reason, uh, decided that 
uh, attempt the geometric approach, uh, and um, it works. And so what I do is uh, for the analytical, it's uh, it's um, you use uh, quite a bit more um, math, if you will, and the geometric approach uses. Uh, small amount of math does a square root I think and uh, square root of dot products which I can calculate the dot products beforehand and just do the square root or something like that and it shouldn't take up too much computing power um, yeah so what I do is I uh, I have my my point in the world uh, and I'm just using the origin for now um, I can uh, make it, you know, translate it and put it anywhere I want based on the coordinates uh, of the object in which I'm looking at. And then I have the, um, that's my first variable and we'll call that C. Um, and if we can reference this, this is a good picture for uh, what I'm talking about. Okay, so put this on the side here. Oh, don't want it that big. We just want this picture. So if you could see my C would be the origin or not the origin but the center point of the object um, and the O would be the origin so that would be my camera uh, camera position um, plus my view direction plus my my ray and what the view direction and ray does is put the puts the uh, make sure makes sure that the ray being cast is uh, straight ahead of you so view direction is directly in front of you and then if you add the 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 ray in which you calculated it will adjust for the screen coordinates that you're currently clicking on so then anywhere it's like almost like a laser going through this through the screen into the world and that's how you adjust for the um uh from it being angled so instead of being so if you didn't do that it would just be angled into the world as you move the mouse and it just it it doesn't work that way it's not very good i'm sure that has a purpose but uh for this uh specifically uh it's you want to do this and the D which is the direction and I got this confused with uh, the actual uh, distance uh, like between the origin and the end here and that's not what it is what what the what the distance is is where you want to go and where I want to go is straight ahead just directly straight ahead and that all that is is the the view direction and I got this mixed up with and I uh, I uh, put in the view direction plus my ray world and tried to multiply it and I was just like what's going on it's not working but all it is is um, the view direction in which you want to go and in this case it's the camera view direction which is directly ahead of you and then what ha what occurs is the origin uh, actually gets multiplied or hold on we'll go down to the code here so and the uh, once you go through all these calculations right here uh, and this is actually a really good site if you want to uh, to go over this stuff is um, uh, here's the site up here it's like scratchpixel.com um, and you, you just Google it and uh, look up ray sphere intersection and it should pop right up it's like the first one and so what I end up doing here is okay so to walk through this uh, we have uh, we want to find our L and then we project our um, uh, our L onto D uh, I believe it's projecting L onto D yeah that's that's right and then that gives us our um, TCA distance between the origin and the um, the uh, center of the object so that gives us our TCA 
and we can say if it's greater than zero then we continue because if it's less than zero then the object is like it's back here and it's not even intersecting anything and then the distance uh, we can calculate using um, Pythagorean's theorem and then we just calculate our um, uh, 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 the TCA minus T, uh, THC and that will give us T0 and then the TH, uh, TCA plus THC will give us the uh, T1 and see the, uh, from that we can we can tell the distance between uh, the origin and the first point and the origin and the second point and uh, from there you know it's pretty easy you just uh, uh, use those uh, points or use those uh, those links and multiply them by the distance or the the direction um, and add it to the origin and boom there's your uh, your two points using a sphere and you could do this in 2d2 uh, pretty pretty simple either way I thought this was the easier approach personally than the analytical approach the analytical um, was uh, a little bit more interesting um, it uses quadratic uh, equations uh, and uh, a lot of more a lot more math a lot more calculations which kind of makes me think well why would you want to use the analytical approach when you could just use geometry which is like simple re really simple math uh, versus here you have to do like square roots and um, powers of square roots and it just uh, it gets tedious and it's it's a lot of code and it, it's just a lot more to mess around with I'm not sure about the advantage of this versus this uh, ge uh, geometric solution. Um, I think the when I first was thinking about ray casting, I was like, well, I could just use projection and boom, here's projection right here. It's being used. So um, personally, I would go with the geometrical approach. It's, it just makes more sense. It's easier to understand. Um, uh, I mean, you. This is easy to understand too, but it's just a lot more calculations. Um, I suppose um, that you could probably, you might be able to tell more, like where you are, um, like how many solutions you have if you have two points, one point, or no points. Um, that might be a um, advantage of using the analytical but um, I'm not entirely sure I'll probably mess around with it a little bit more and, and uh, see what's better and what the uh, differences are but yeah so the um, intersection and I could use this for a lot of things um, and I'm just kind of getting the basics done and understanding uh, putting it all together want to make sure it works and make sh and visually uh, see that it's working rather than just trusting the uh, the the code and the math because sometimes the math doesn't work and you know you get far into it and you're like whoa what went wrong you know so it's always good to see like where you are and uh, and have that you know extra confidence and moving on to the next point Anyways, a um, little short video on uh, intersections, line intersection with spheres. And probably the next thing I'll work on is l line intersection with planes, which would probably be easier than spheres, but, you know, we'll see. All right, have a good one.